What's going on guys, Car Review Guys here. My name is AJ and this week we have the 2024 Lexus RX 450 H Plus, which just means that it is a plug-in hybrid. And I gotta tell you, pretty impressed, usually not the biggest uh, plug-in hybrid fans. This one, very, very refined. We'll get into all of the details next video, five things to love, five things to improve. If you are new to my channel, thanks for stopping by. We uh, get a new press car every single week. And we also have some of our own cars, supercars, stuff like that, that we like to uh, play with here and there. So let's, uh, here's the format of the video. So if you wanna skip through, go ahead, it's up to you. We're going to start with the exterior right after the cinematic, uh, which is always a minute or less. And like I said, then the exterior, which is going to be um, stats, figures, stuff I feel like you guys would like to know. Then we're gonna go to my garage because it's so hot here, we need to keep the camera from overheating to go through all of the interior components. Uh, and then we're gonna be taking it on a drive. And again, one last time, next video, five things to love, five things to improve. So without further ado, let's roll. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that cinematic. So this RX 450H Plus is a 2.5 liter four cylinder pushing 304 horsepower combined. Transmission is an eCVT, all wheel drive drivetrain. Curb weight's gonna come in at around 4,750 pounds. And it's gonna be pushing this from zero to 60 in about six seconds. Lexus website claims a 6.2, but many reviewers have gotten a 5.8, so I took the average and I have replicated a six second myself. Now, gas mileage is obviously important for those that are uh, looking at this vehicle. Gas only is a combined average of around 35 MPGs. Gas with ele electric is 83 MPGs, and gas tank size is 14 and a half gallons. Now, touching on dimensions, looking here at the rear, you're looking at 6.3 feet wide. Overall length is 16.1 feet, and your ground clearance is 8.1 inches. Now, pricing starts at around $69,230. Tester today is $76,490, and that is including the destination charge. Just want to point out some of the things on the exterior you may or may not notice it does have the triple beam led headlamps those are optional you have the signature lexus uh running badge there 360 camera you can see that one is located there the other two are on the mirrors and obviously one in the rear also at night you can see a light right here not lit up that will light up around the corner so that way it emulates uh basically turning your wheel so you can see around corners and stuff like that uh, there is also parking sensors on this vehicle. And then taking a look at the wheels, you were looking at a 235 50 21. They're like in a gunmetal gray, if you will. Hides brake dust, which is really nice. Now, keyless entry is on all four doors. You can see it there, even on the rear. Here on the passenger side, this is where the uh, charger is to plug it in. You get around 37 to 40 miles on one charge if you wanna use electric only. LED tail lamps, and you can see all wheel drive to pop the rear hatch right underneath the X, just press right there and up it will go. Now let's touch back here really quick. This blind just retracts like so. You have power folding seats. Uh, you can see another speaker back here. Uh, and then you do have an outlet located right there. And I will put here with the seats 
folded up and down some of the cubic feet for you. All right, that's pretty much everything on the exterior. Again, let's go to my garage and let's jump on the inside. And then after that, we will take it for a drive. Let's roll. Now that we're back in my garage, so we can step on into the interior so my camera doesn't overheat. Gotta love uh, GoPros, am I right? Uh, could be because I use a road mic with it as well. I don't know. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and step on into the interior. Five foot nine, if you are new to my channel. And definitely pretty easy to get into the rear headroom, solid three inches up there. Seat uh, at least four inches there, but technically my seat can slide forward, so probably a good six and a half, seven inches. While we're back here, we have heated seats, cooled seats, and we have our own temperature control. We have two USB-Cs, and you can slide this seat forward and lean it as well with those buttons there if no one is there. And then that way you can kind of recline out just a little bit. Uh, the seats here, there's a button over on the side. If I were to bring it over here, you can probably see it'll bring me forward and then back. You can kind of see the range of motion. So there's a good amount of adjustability in that. Up above, you can see there's a panoramic roof uh, and the headliner is like a Alcantara suede. Uh, and then just taking a look at the door, you do have your own window shade. This is like the Alcantara stuff, nice soft upgraded Mark Levinson's and this tester. Window switch, no wiggle, no jiggle. Love that it has some bezel. It's nice, like a brown leather, nice and soft for your elbow. Also, uh, a little bit more firm up in this region, but uh, nonetheless, it is leather. And up here, kind of like a rubberized type material. Alrighty, stepping into the front. Super easy to get in. You can probably tell by how quickly uh, I could move getting into the front versus the back. The back still has plenty of uh, headspace and everything, but the front is honestly just a little bit easier. As far as bringing your legs up, not bad at all. Uh, again, ground clearance around eight inches, 8.1 inches. So you should not really have any problems. It's a pretty comfortable vehicle to get in and out of. Now we are in my garage, so I do not have it on yet. We will uh, put it in accessories mode in just a second. You do have three settings for memory seating rear hatch, uh, and then the gas tank, which is located here on the driver's side. And then taking a look pretty similar to the rear, you also have power folding mirrors. Out in front of us, we do have a heads up display and you can control uh, everything from the cruise control located right here. It's all heat sensitive and it is and will show up out on the cruise control. Hopefully you can see that there. And over on the left, this is for uh, all of your different menus. Uh, steering wheel, you have the little pieces of wood on here. Uh, pretty thin steering wheel. Right here in front, you can probably see, um, maybe, sometimes it shows on camera, sometimes it doesn't, but it has the light sensors um, that basically are watching your eyes. You can turn that off in the settings if you would like, that is totally up to you. Up above us, we have a digital rear view mirror. So as you can see, I can flip it to regular or digital. Uh, and then infotainment, if you've seen any newer Lexuses uh, or Toyotas, very similar here. As far as pressing the different buttons, uh, the responsiveness is pretty good. There is ambient lighting, as you can see up there. It's also on the door panels. Uh, you can go in here, change all of the various settings. The one thing that I will note, this also has, obviously has heated seats, cooled seats in the front and the rear, as I already pointed out, with the heated steering wheel. This also has what's called S-Flow. So it will send air automatically to the seats that are being occupied only, uh, which is a pretty nifty feature. Obviously, you can go through some of these different settings. It's all personal. There's not too much really to discuss. Uh, and then you have self-parking, right? So you can press the button. It'll basically park for you. I've done some other demonstrations with other vehicles, so feel free to watch some of my shorts on that. Uh, it does have a 360 camera, so I can click the button there. And you can see it is camera through camera, which isn't great, but it is a really good clear camera, which is nice because Toyota Lexus was behind on that for quite some time. 
Now, down here we have a wireless phone charger, two USB-Cs, we have a few more chargers down below. You can cover everything if you would like, this beautiful looking wood. And then you have some soft touch where your elbow, or elbow, that's your knee, so still learning the body parts. That's where that would go. And then as far as up here goes, some of your different EV uh, buttons, gear shift, pretty standard nowadays. And then you have a dual opening center console that way or over here and you can fit probably two to three tissue boxes down in there. I think that's most of the interior, so I think it's time to where we go take this vehicle out on a drive, because that is definitely where this thing shines. My first impression of this vehicle, I've already put 75, 80 miles on it, actually a little bit more, I'm, I'm closer to like 100 miles at this point, to be honest. Uh, my first impression is how good it is transitioning between uh, the hybrid and the gas, or the battery and the gas motor, making it a plug-in hybrid, obviously. Um, there are many vehicles that uh, they're jerky in the transition and then also kind of noisy and you can hear it and not in this vehicle. Um, and speaking of noise, I have three categories for me. You have tire noise, you have wind noise, and then you have powertrain noise. And powertrain, again, very quiet. You can really only hear this vehicle on uh, full throttle, uh, which is expected. And it's nothing crazy, but you can hear it, it's there. Wind noise, almost non-existent. Uh, it's exceptionally good. And as far as tire, tire noise goes, you can hear it just a little bit, but it's not bad at all. It's very contained and definitely very Lexus. And what I mean by that is the ride quality in a Lexus to me is always really good, which here momentarily we'll be going over a cattle guard. I will bring that up in a second, and then you'll be able to see kind of noise and suspension wise as to how good it rides. You can definitely tell in some of my other videos if you wanna go watch those and see directly in comparison uh, opposed to just my opinion. Let's check on our blind spots. Over to the left, not bad at all. Over to our right, honestly not bad either. There is obviously a little bit back there, but nothing crazy. It is equipped with blind spot, blind spot monitoring if you so need it. The driving that I've had so far has been a mix of city and freeway, and probably a little bit more freeway mileage-wise. Time-wise, probably pretty close and similar. So with that said, uh, even on the freeway, all of my noise standards that I just talked about, that is taken into consideration as well, because sometimes when you're on the freeway doing 75 miles an hour, there's a little wind noise and not the case in this. There are various drive modes you can change in between, and I will say they have programmed them quite well. Not every vehicle I get, I will agree with that, but I think they've done really good in this. Um, I will say that Eco obviously definitely kills your throttle and power as far as like how hard you have to hit it to accelerate. Makes sense, you want an Eco. And then as far as like the, the different like sport and stuff like that, you can definitely feel a difference. It's ready to go, suspension stiffens up. So again, I think they've programmed it all very well. Other features on this is the adaptive and the lane centering. Lane centering only works whenever you have your cruise control set and it stays dead center of the lane. Uh, as far as the adaptive cruise control goes, I'm happy with how it accelerates, slows down, stuff like that. Some vehicles, they speed up a little too fast or too slow. This is honestly exactly how I would do it, and I would consider myself a pretty average uh, driver on day-to-day -day use. I've already touched on the suspension just a little bit, but again, we're going to be coming up to a category here shortly, and that will basically you'll be able to visibly see how well the suspension does. I'm thoroughly impressed with the suspension. Uh, even around turns, uh, if you're gonna take it at a little bit of pace, uh, not that an SUV needs to, it handles it very well and you don't have a lot of body roll, which is pretty nice as well. Okay, we are coming up to the cattle guard. So here we go. Very maintained. The whole body of the vehicle come up just a little bit and then it goes down, stays dead still. Very good suspension wise, noise wise also, definitely better than your average vehicle. Just cruising around in this vehicle, it definitely feels luxury and very Lexus-esque. We'll leave it like that. Uh, it It's everything in it feels very luxury and I think that's honestly what you're looking for in a Lexus. At least that is what I am looking for in a Lexus and 
99.9% of Lexuses are not just a badge. They are definitely, there is a difference between the Toyota version, a little more refined, a little more quiet, and feeling a little more luxury for sure. So this is definitely a vehicle, if you are looking for a plug-in hybrid, this would probably be near the top of my list. Again, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Next video, five things to love, five things to improve. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.